Hello my people, Finer Bub here. Thanks for checking out the video. Today we're talking about goggles for skiing and snowboarding. Specifically, these sub $50 goggles from Horvath and why I think they're a great option for beginner skiers and riders looking for gear on a budget. Throughout the video, I'll cover everything that I think you need to know when shopping for a new pair of ski goggles. I'll show you how I test these goggles and towards the end of the video, I'll compare them to some of the goggles I've used in the past so that you can get a feel for whether or not they might be a good option for you. Alrighty then, without further ado, let us begin. Full disclosure, I'd never heard of this brand before a rep reached out to me and offered to send me a free pair of goggles. And I've got to admit that I was skeptical at first, but once the goggles arrived and I got the opportunity to test them out, I started to realize that for the price, they're actually a pretty great deal. I also just want to mention that even though I did get these goggles for free, this is not a sponsored video. I'm not being paid to say any of this. Obviously, I understand that there is some inherent bias created by the fact that I did get these goggles for free, but Horvath doesn't get to pre-approve any of this content. Horvath doesn't get to see this video before you do. They don't have any input on what I say. They don't even get to demand that I make a video, but the fact that they make a decent quality product at a very reasonable price makes me feel like I ought to promote that. I just, you know, want to be fully transparent so that there are no trust issues here. But, you know, feel free to ask me any questions if, if you're curious about my exchange with them. So just to give you some basic info about these goggles, Horvath has an Amazon store where you can find all of their goggle options. They do come in OTG which stands for over the glasses. So if you wear glasses, they do have models that fit over your glasses and they range from 38 to 46 dollars US on Amazon, which is incredibly affordable for ski goggles. The lenses are coated with an anti-fog layer and they provide UV protection. All the lenses are mirrored. That's more of an aesthetic choice. Doesn't actually change anything about the optical quality. Okay. So before I get into this, I just want to say if you or a company you represent also produces outdoor gear that you'd like me to test out and potentially showcase on this channel, you can go check out my channel description where I have a shipping address that you can send gear to. If you send me gear, it's not a guarantee that you're going to get exposure on the channel for your product. I obviously want to maintain the integrity of this channel. So in order to stay true to my mission here and to you, the viewers, obviously I'm not just going to show everything on the channel that comes my way but if you happen to work for an outdoor gear company that produces something that you think is relevant to the content that I produce on this channel you can feel free to send me samples however just know that by sending me something it doesn't guarantee that I'm going to show it on the channel or that you'll get any sort of social media exposure but yes I'm I'm happy to test out gear so yeah I just want to thank Horvath for reaching out and for sending me this pair of goggles it's good to know that that people care about what I think so yeah let's get into the nitty-gritty so the description of these goggles basically covers all the bases that you want to see in a pair of ski goggles, the UV protection, the anti-fog, the wind protection, uh, scratch resistant, and interchangeable lenses. So what's unique about these Horvath goggles? Well, it's not entirely unique. I have seen this feature before. So I have seen magnetic interchangeable lens systems before in ski goggles. I've seen them in Gordini goggles, and I've also seen that Smith has uh, a line of magnetic lenses that they are now promoting. Each company does it their own way. So the way these ones work is that they do have magnets right at the top and bottom, like where your forehead and your nose will sit right there and right there. And then they connect to the corresponding magnets here and they're pretty strong, but there are also these little latches. Yeah, now they're locked in. So there are a few factors to consider when shopping for a new pair of ski goggles optical quality, ventilation, fit and comfort and helmet compatibility, ease of use, that has to do with the interchangeable lens system, and all of what you get just for the money. So that includes extra lenses, storage options, like a goggle bag, or a hard case, like this clamshell one. So. Over the years, I've tested a wide variety of goggles from different companies like Oakley, Spy Plus, Smith, Giro, Anin, Marker, and many more. And you know, they all have their pros and cons, but yeah, when it comes to what you get for the money, Horvath really just kind of leaves them all 
in the dust. Unlike my $200 Smith IOX goggles, which only come with a microfiber cloth goggle bag, for a quarter of the price, these Horvath goggles come with a protective hard case in addition to a microfiber cloth goggle bag. Now, it should be noted that included in the $200 price tag, the Smith goggles do come with two lenses, one for sunny days and one for low light conditions. But to be perfectly honest, I rarely use the darker Smith lenses, and when I do, I often have to pull them up in order to see better while skiing through shadowy trees, making me wish I had used the low light lenses anyway. In fact, my friend Sam opted to wear the low light lenses on all four days that he tested the goggles, including one very sunny day at Bromley where I actually opted to use my darker Smith lenses. So the reason I bring this up is mainly because the Horvath goggles only come with one lens and any extra lenses are sold separately. The company rep was kind enough to send me an extra lens here. However, in 99% of conditions, you are more than likely going to be just fine with a low light lens. I do occasionally use the sunglasses lens on my Smith goggles, but in the future, I don't think I'm gonna be quite as concerned with getting goggles that come with two lenses, just because I do find myself using the low light lens even in sunny conditions, and unless it's really just insanely bright outside and there's no chance that I'm gonna be in any sort of shadowy conditions, there's really no need for the darker lens. Okay, so now let's talk about how I tested these Horvath goggles. So these goggles were tested for five days total. My friend Sam wore them on four days that we went skiing together, and then I wore them for a day. The first day he wore them was a snowy overcast day at Stratton. The second day he wore them was a sunny bluebird day at Bromley. The third day was a pretty sunny, maybe partly cloudy day at Okemo. And the fourth day was an overcast day at Magic Mountain. And then the fifth day of testing, I wore the goggles at Jay Peak when it was just insanely cloudy, overcast, low light conditions. We're going into the unknown void. So my friend Sam, he's a snowboarder. I wouldn't go so far as to call him an expert. No offense, Sam, obviously, you understand. But yeah, part of the reason why I wanted him to test these was because he isn't quite as experienced as I am. And I wanted to know if the lower optical quality in these goggles compared to the Smiths affected his ability to you know, navigate the mountain and ski safely or snowboard safely. Sam, how do you like your goggles so far? They're amazing. <laughs> Good for $50. These are the best goggles that I've ever worn in my life. You know, he only had positive things to say. He really liked the goggles. He did not use the dark lenses. He just felt like he could see better with the low light lenses. And I personally have had the same experience even with my higher optical quality Smith Chroma Pop lenses. So I would say, especially for beginners who are on a budget, there's a pretty significant uh, financial barrier to entry for new skiers and riders. And I think any sort of concession you can make for yourself with regards to the cost is worth it and as you gain experience and gain a love for the sport you'll feel more inclined to spend more money on small, less significant upgrades, like the difference between the optical quality in a Horvath lens compared to a Smith lens or an Oakley lens. But I'd say for beginners who are still just sort of mastering the mechanics of skiing and snowboarding, the slight improvement in the optics is not going to make the difference in terms of like how good or bad of an experience you have. I used to get all bent out of shape when goggle companies made you buy extra lenses separately, but lately I've come to the conclusion that you can pretty much use low light lenses for almost any conditions. After five days of testing, we found this to be true with the Horvath goggles, but I'd say that it's even more evident when using goggles made by companies like Oakley and Smith, whose lens technology promotes the best optics in the industry. However, for those rare days when lighting changes a lot, it's still important to have the ability to swap lenses easily which brings me to the next point about the lens swapping mechanism. For years, goggle brands have been improving the mechanisms used to easily swap lenses. When I bought my Smith IOXs a few seasons ago, their quick latch mechanism was one of the best, enabling you to swap lenses in less time than it takes to ride the chairlift. However, recently, companies have been incorporating magnets in order to speed up that process even further so you can swap lenses without even taking the goggles off your face. However, given the combined time that Sam and I tested these goggles for, I think that it's safe to say that most people, especially beginners, don't need to worry about purchasing a second lens for these goggles. So when I was at Jay Peak, I chose to wear the Horvath goggles. I assumed that halfway through the day, I would want to go back to the car and swap them out for my Smiths. 
However, even though the light conditions were pretty awful and it was really hard to see, especially up in that J cloud, I skied the entire day with the Horvath goggles and they weren't a problem at all, even in terrible lighting conditions. And yeah, you do notice a difference in the optical quality, but it didn't affect my ability to handle the terrain or anything like that. I was perfectly comfortable and I just really think that this is an area where you can afford to save money. And just by spending $50 on these goggles as opposed to $150 more on a slightly better pair of goggles, the diminishing returns just really don't make sense for someone who's maybe buying a new helmet as well or buying a board or a pair of skis or boots or anything like that. So for beginners skiing and riding on more mild terrain, the Horvath optics are more than good enough, especially for such an affordable price. So yeah, obviously take with a grain of salt the fact that I did get these goggles for free. However, after having tested them, I do think that they're more than worthwhile, uh, especially given the money you save for those who are shopping for new ski gear on a budget. Alrighty, my people, that concludes today's episode of the Finer Bub Show. So if you've already tested out these Horvath goggles or if you've got any suggestions for ski goggles that I should try out, I'd love to have you comment below especially if you think your insight can help me disprove something that I think I already know. But before you do, I just want to thank you oh so much for watching. I'd also like to thank Sam for helping me test these goggles. Really do appreciate it. So if you're looking for new gear or planning your next trip, don't let the small details stress you out because remember, life's an adventure, so relax, breathe in the outdoors, and don't forget to appreciate the finer things in life. See you out there, people. Peace. final word on these goggles. $50 are definitely worth it for beginners. Um, there's no noticeable optical benefit to wearing the Smiths that would affect you as a beginner on the terrain that a beginner should be skiing. That being said, there is definitely an advantage to having quality lenses like Oakley Prisms or Smith Chrome Pops. But I think if you're just starting out, these are more than good enough. And the fact that they're $50 makes them even more worthwhile. So thumbs up from Finerbug for the Horvath goggles.